back here with Donald Bogle as we continue our look at films uh, featured in the uh, new MGM Plus four-part series, Hollywood Black, which is based on Donald Bogle's book. The third film that we're here to talk about tonight that Donald is presenting is from 1949, one of uh, four pictures released that year that are known as problem pictures that really, yeah. in many ways, for the first time for mainstream Hollywood films, uh, took on issues of race and took them seriously. They're problematic in many ways, but they yeah. were no, important and groundbreaking also. This one is Lost Boundaries from 1949 with a cast led by Mel Ferrer. These four films, The Problem Pictures, there's also Pinky, there's Intruder in the Dust, and Home of the Brave yeah, with, with James, with James Edwards. Edwards. After World War II, there were the, the black GIs who had fought abroad for the freedom of others and, and returning home and realizing, as they always knew, but it was all the more striking, basic freedoms they didn't have in their own country. And, and, and there were these filmmakers Stanley Kramer was one who felt that movies had to go in a different direction. And, and it's the idea of mainstream movies. And these four problem pictures were, were released. And they led the way in the 50s to, um, to Dorothy Dandridge and Sidney Poitier that, that the Hollywood film changed. Um, not that there weren't still problems in the Hollywood film. There, there were. But, but they were leading us in a new direction. And the performers had something now that they, it, it was different from playing comic servants. No, no, they, not. These they, were characters they, of, of depth uh, yes, and complexity. And, and, and relevance yeah, yeah. To, to them. So, so uh, I like this picture, Lost Boundaries. It's a story set in a small New Hampshire town, a true story of a black doctor passing as white, his entire family passing as white. The lead actor, as I mentioned here, is Mel Ferrer. One of the significant issues with it is that these are white actors playing yeah, the, a and black this is family. A, it's a real compromise. Yeah. It's very interesting that one of the performers who voiced her opinions when the film was going into production about this casting was Freddie Washington, who yeah. had played Piola, the young black actress who was very light-skinned and who played a character passes for white in the first imitation of life. This adaptation of your book, Hollywood Black, of the MGM Plus series, has a little bit on, on, on Freddie Washington yes. and, and includes the very telling fact, and I don't mean to pass judgment on anyone who made another decision, but Freddie Washington was light-skinned enough that she could have passed for white. And she made the very conscious she, uh, decision, I'm she, not going to do that. No, she wasn't going to do it. She felt that, that lost boundaries, that, you know, look, in 1934, with the first imitation of life, John Stahl, the director, found a black actress who could play the figure passing for white. Why couldn't they have found people in 1949? But the film still has this power and still draws us to it. In the midst of this, Canada Lee, the black actor, appears late in the film. He plays a police officer. Yep. But as I watched it, there appeared a black actor I didn't know anything about at that time. And I was just sort of stunned by his presence. And this is William Greaves. Who plays and, the, the uh, son's black friend. He comes before Sidney Poitier, before Harry Belafonte. And he is so relaxed, so intelligent, so assured of himself and he felt there was not going to be a place for him in 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 hollywood cinema and he went to canada where he studied filmmaking and then later returned to new york city and he became a very important director of documentaries i think william greaves has the most emotional moment when his white friend or his uh, he, they, they both think he's white. Yeah, <laughs> he think yeah, that, they both do. At that point, the son doesn't know. He invites Greaves to come to the family's home in New Hampshire, and there's this instant recognition of Greaves that that maybe his friend doesn't recognize what he's asking. Thanks a lot, Holly, but I don't think that'll work out too well. <laughs> Why not? It's perfect. Well, your folks might not like it. He saw it as his responsibility to protect his white friend yeah, to, from yeah. all the racists who are almost yeah, certainly you you know, yeah, that he in was, and around his family. Yeah, he's yeah. naive. But it's very interesting, and I think it's a good touch in the film, when the sister of the young man everyone thinks is white, and she's black but doesn't know it, she hears he's bringing his black friend home, and she refers to him as a coon. And the father, Mel Ferrer, 
It's the only things, time he gets emotions, mad and really yeah, and, and you know, and this feeling of uh, disappointment and frustration, which Ferrer is very good at, at communicating. Because that direction, that, that disappointment is one hundred percent. He he's feeling it in himself. Yes. Like he's thinking, I have let my daughter not know who she is, yes. and now she's using this word. This is all on me. That's what I'm yeah. thinking. He's feeling at that yeah. moment. All right, Donald. Let's uh, let's watch the film. Much more to say afterwards. Okay. Here it is from 1949, directed by Alfred Worker. Mel Ferrer leads the cast of Lost Boundaries. Back with Donald Bogle as we discuss the film we just saw, Lost Boundaries. Donald is here to help promote the new series on MGM Plus, Hollywood Black, four yeah. part series based on Donald's book, Hollywood Black, yeah. which he wrote for TCM, one of your 10 books on the yes, history precisely. of black actors and actresses and filmmakers uh, over the last 125 years. Lost Boundaries is one of these four problem pictures from 1949, and, and the pictures themselves aren't the problems of the problem title. They address problems in America that had yet to be addressed by Hollywood. In two of those films, Lost Boundaries and Pinky, the core issue is passing. Yes. Of light-skinned black Americans finding a way to navigate life as white. You do wonder if you're gonna break down the story for me, though, like, did the son, and did Howie never ask to see a photo of his grandparents? Well, that's the other, you know, family connections, family ties, that you don't get that. And the wife's family, her father, who he's been passing and wants nothing to do with the black His community. biggest fear in life is it, that he's, is somebody's going to find exposed. out. Right, exactly. Yeah. Did the children not have any contact with them? Because they're living, I'm talking about their grandparents who are passing, because they are passing and he well, wouldn't he, tell he mentions them that, that my sister doesn't even come to the house suggesting that his sister yes, can't pass yes, right yeah, yeah and there is that real tragedy of course that you then to do this you have to make a decision to really completely break with your family like you're going into the witness protection program you have to assume this entire other identity yeah but this doctor the way he's depicted because it isn't like he doesn't have racial pride i've always felt there was something else here that has not been explained. Right. So, uh, Donald, is, 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 is you're, you're done for the night. We're done co-hosting yeah. movies tonight. But you did program our next film. Yes. The Emperor Jones from, yes. from 1933 yes. with a cast led by a seminally important black actor of the first half of the 20th yeah. century, yeah. Paul Robeson. The great Paul Robeson, yeah. yeah. It's based on the play by Eugene O'Neill. And, and this was his his big role. The film was made outside of Hollywood. It's really an independent film. It would have had to have been, yeah. right, at the and, time. Yeah, and it got a lot of attention. And, and Robeson, it's really stunning to see him. He's so sure of himself. And he's a powerful figure, and he's not going to back down from anyone. And so in terms of black masculinity that you didn't really get to see in Hollywood films, Robeson just has it, and you follow him. What's interesting about the Emperor Jones, Eugene O'Neill, uh, when he wrote it, the, the actor who created the part on stage originally was Charles Gilpin, who was considered the great black actor. And Gilpin clashed with Eugene O'Neill because Gilpin didn't like the use of the N-word in, in the play. And he would change the dialogue. And, and uh, O'Neill... Oh, yeah, O'Neill, I'm going to guess, didn't like that. Oh, no, he yeah. didn't like it at all. But when The Emperor Jones was released, the movie, in the black community, there were complaints about the N-word. So Gilpin, he was going in the right place. The, the other ironic thing is that Eugene O'Neill liked Robeson and liked his performance. But he said sometime later that he felt the person who really got to his conception was Gilpin. Oh, really? But Robeson is strong in this film. He's powerful. He's magnetic. He's really, and, he's virile. I mean, he's yes, like, he's like precisely. Sylvester Stallone and Bruce Willis, and all these yeah. 80s action heroes. Yeah. Like he's, yeah. he's so good looking yeah. and strong yeah. and big. Yes. He carries the movie. And, and in that sense, this the film is a classic. In the series, the MGM Plus series, Hollywood Black, there is a, a, a good little bit on, on Paul Robeson, who yes. is very historically yes. important. Yes. So people should uh, should check that out. Uh, Donald, this has been a delight as always. Oh, Ben, Thank my you. pleasure. Thank you my so pleasure. much, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Donald is done uh, for the night, but of course the movie he just talked about is coming up next from 1933. Paul Robeson leads the cast of The Emperor Jones. 
Next on TCM, the Emperor Jones, then the Mighty Quinn, and later, out of the blue, the sky's the limit on TCM tonight.